I bet you're wishing your Jeep had a V8. Well, so are we. Hey everybody, I'm Bubba with X's 4x4. We build badass Jeeps and other cool 4x4 stuff. In this video, we're gonna be adding the 392 Hemi to our shop Gladiator. So let's go get started. So the inevitable is here. We are putting a Hemi in our shop Gladiator. Now, this isn't something that we necessarily set out to do when we first started thinking about getting the Gladiator, um, you know, over a year ago. In fact, we did not want to do it. We've done several V8 swaps in the past in the previous model Jeeps. And while it's always awesome to have a V8, they always sort of had some sort of gremlins in there, some sort of quirks in there, you know, and it was just something we were hoping that when we did this new platform, or we weren't going to do, it's gonna stay away from the V8 stuff altogether. We did the thing. We will not speak of you guys know you've seen those videos that was super disappointing we almost blew the engine up pulled that thing off right away then we did the hamburger supercharger which that was actually really good we're still super impressed with it and to this day haven't had any issues with it whatsoever if it weren't for the fact that we're doing hemi we would still have it on there if anything you take away from this is the hamburgers the, the guys have been awesome it's a really cool performance adder but no matter how hard I tried to sell that to some people that call one V8 swap, they just had it in their mind. They want a V8 conversion of some kind. So we did some research. I did some calling around. I talked to a few different companies. We got a lot of good feedback from people that had done it. Then I got a JK in the shop that had a 392 in it. And man, did it sound awesome. It looked great underneath the hood. Everything functioned really well in it. I mean, it, it got me excited again about doing V8 swaps. I got the green light to do a Hemi conversion. I came to the conclusion after making a few more phone calls, the only thing that made any sense was to go with America's Most Wanted 4x4 out of Holly, Michigan. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with them, you will be by the time the end of this video is done. A lot of people out there trust them. I swung for it. I went ahead and we're gonna be doing the 6.4 or the 392 Hemi conversion and our Gladiator because I feel like that is gonna be the most practical. If, if putting a V8 in a Jeep is practical, I like to go off road and I don't want boost when I'm trying to go over obstacles and all that stuff. Now, from my understanding, it's not a big deal with the Jeeps that do have the Hellcats. I don't know about the Demon, but Hellcat, uh, Light Bright. They have one in there and, and they say it's great, works great. It looks great. I test drove a Hellcat Wrangler up at America's Most Wanted. It was insane. Knowing myself, I don't need a boosted Hemi in, in any of my vehicles. The 6.4 is probably gonna be the most popular choice for my customers. So I wanted to put something in here that they could, if they're just on the fence about it, they can get in it and drive it and go, wow, this is, this is everything I expect it to be. You know, I didn't wanna put a Hellcat in here and then somebody drive that and then get a 6.4 and be kind of disappointed because it didn't it didn't have that same feeling that the hellcat had that doesn't mean anything whatsoever that the hellcats or the demons or the elephants are not a great option for you if that's you then you do you and i will totally install that thing for you a couple weeks ago i flew up to holly michigan i'm up here in holly michigan in america's most wanted four by four gonna be doing some training for a few days on how to put hemis and jails jt's do some walk around, show you guys some of the stuff that's in the shop. There's some stuff in there, it's wicked cool, but unfortunately I can't show you at this time. So I'm gonna go get to work and take you with me. And we started doing a conversion. We were installing a, a Demon into a JT and it was awesome. The cleanliness of this swap is unreal. These guys never stop with R&D. They are constantly doing R&D on these kits. They're constantly making it better. As Jared, the owner, will tell you, he's always sanding the edges. Like he's constantly making the stuff better. So even now, I think it is such a clean swap that Jeep themselves couldn't do a better job. There's nothing holding back the guys from America's Most Wanted. No matter what happens, I don't think Jeep's gonna make a V8 Wrangler. But if they do, by the time it happens, there'll be well over a million JLs on the road already. Think about that. These things haven't even been on the road that long since 2018. They're teasing everybody with the idea of having a 392 Wrangler, but there hasn't been any kind of tease as far as a V8 truck. For all you guys out there that really want to flex and put some big Detroit power in these Jeeps, 
This is the option. And in my opinion, it is the only option. There's an option to put an LS in there. You guys know how I feel about that. The LS really doesn't belong in anything after 2015. You know, you could say that your state doesn't do emissions and all this stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. Hey, one thing I can tell you though, you cannot guarantee me whatsoever that some federal law is gonna come down and be retroactive and prevent you from running that engine in those vehicles. A Hemi belongs in a Chrysler vehicle. These are great products, meaning they're brand spanking new. They're gonna meet all the emissions requirements that are on your vehicle as it is now. So like or newer. So that's, that's a plus here. There's some other companies out there that do close to the same stuff, but there's a few little quirks in there. Certain things not working, maybe like cruise control. Let's put something in there that works 100% that you're not gonna have any issues. And that's where the America's Most Wanted kit comes in. You're gonna fire this thing up and it's gonna be OEM quality. That's where I stand on it. And we've already kind of started taking things apart. I'm gonna grab my buddy Blake and we're gonna start unboxing this and show you what's going inside. Step one in any engine swap whatsoever is always pull a tuner or programmer, whatever you want to call it, make sure you take that off. We've already gone inside and completely removed the taser from the system. After that, we need to pull the PCM. We need to get this thing shipped out up to Holly, Michigan ASAP. So we're gonna overnight that thing. As soon as the taser is taken off and removed from the system, Blaze gonna pull the PCM off and I'm gonna box that up run over to FedEx and drop it off. Then the next step after that is he's going to remove the battery. And then he's gonna remove the Freon from the system. Normally we would do that, right? We would pull the Freon or refrigerant from the system, but we had an AC leak. So we're actually gonna skip the discharge or removal recovery on our vehicle, but we always will do that in every vehicle. I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna let Blake start pulling the PCM. Starting day two. Day one, we pulled all the stock stuff out of the truck. We did some other extracurricular activities. We put some long arm brackets in. We were up here pretty late last night. We wanted to get some of the suspension swapped out while we had the body off and the engine out. It makes it a lot easier. We did get the new motor mounts welded into the frame, painted up prep so it'd be nice and dry this morning. Today, we're gonna actually start modifying some of the wiring and we're gonna drop in the engine and transmission transfer case start buttoning things up and getting ready to actually be done done, uh, hopefully on day three. PCM was shipped out, we're waiting on that to get back, uh, hopefully tomorrow, maybe Thursday. It may take a little bit longer because this is the first time we've actually done it here in our own shop. We don't want to rush through and forget anything, so we're gonna take a little bit of extra time. Right now, we're gonna lower the truck down and start making some changes to the firewall, some wiring changes, stuff like that. Hopefully get all that buttoned up, pick it back up, roll the chassis forward and drop the new engine in today. All right, 
The Hemi is in the chassis. We just sat down in the motor mounts. Transmission set down the cross member exactly where it was supposed to be. And everything looks great. All the clearances look great on here. One of the best swaps that I've ever done so far, as far as everything working the way it's supposed to. Now we're, we're on the home stretch. We're just gonna start dressing out everything. We'll install a steering gearbox today. We are removing the Redneck Ram from the system. We are installing a PSC system. The Redneck Ram has been flawless. Yes, we are removing it, but it doesn't mean that we don't like it. I believe the PSC is just gonna work better in the long term with the Hemi conversion, so that's why we're doing that. We're gonna install that today, hopefully set the body back down, just start plugging wires in. PCM should be in any minute. We'll start it up. So looking forward to this. It's been great so far and we can't wait. All right, FedEx Express just dropped off a box from America's Most Wanted 4x4. This is day three, this is Wednesday. We shipped this out Monday and it's already back. This is our new PCM, which is carefully been wrapped in bubble wrap as not to get damaged in transport. Check this out. Will not mistake this for any other PCM because it has a big giant sticker on the back that says America's Most Wanted 4x4. Ready to go in as soon as we are. This is our uh, HP tuners module that we'll use to talk to our laptop. A couple other pieces in here. Appears to be a very nice RAM assist bracket for a UD60. And another very important piece. Look at that. Look at that fancy looking track bar brace thing. We're gonna talk about this more in a minute when we install it though. Test, 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 test. All right. Bo! Shh, Bo! We're in. I was just going to awkwardly walk towards you <laughs> while you're talking, just to like... Are you recording? Yeah? Yes? Oh, okay. Stop it. Now, this is something that's really, really cool that America's Most Wanted came up with. This is a much beefier track bar brace. What's really cool about it is like if you're adding hydro assist to these and you want to run a PSC kit, PSC doesn't really make a, a regular size gearbox like they do in the JKs because the steering gearboxes were bigger anyways on the JLs and JTs. So. If you want to run a PSC gearbox, you can't run a big board box because the Hemi is just so big in there and there's just not really a lot of room. So you have to use a smaller gearbox. Hence the PSC gearbox. So what they came up with, it was this bracket. It puts the JK steering gearbox bolt pattern back in there and allows us to use a regular JK steering gearbox with a lower gear reduction. So the Jeep is actually gonna turn better. It's, it's gonna function a lot better as far as steering goes. As many of you know, the JLs and JTs have a lot of steering issues and this just completely takes all of that out of this. This is really nice to have also because we have so many big builds that we do. Customers, they know they're gonna be putting a Hemi in it down the road. So when they do like a PSC conversion, this allows us to put that JK box in this JL and JT and kind of plan ahead for when we do a, a Hemi install down the road. So right now we've already cut a big hole in the frame right here. And basically what we did was we removed that odd man out. One thing I didn't touch on was these three holes right here is the same pattern as the JK. It's just this one like right here in this corner. I guess when they developed the JLs, they moved it a little bit out of the way where the coil spring would have been sitting. So we're gonna put that hole back where it was on the JKs. That required us to remove a chunk of the frame to get that sleeve out that's internal. That's gonna be back in there now. So Blake's gonna bolt this up. Body's on, everything clearanced really well. No interference whatsoever. There's a slight little massaging we have to do to the cab firewall to clear the exhaust on the passenger side. We got lucky, we clearanced it right the first time. So we didn't have to pull the body back off and make any modifications. Right now, Blake is tidying up the wiring up there. Not something I think you necessarily have to do, but we like to pull in all that stuff out of the inside of the fender wall. That means taking out the secondary battery. We took a lot of stuff out. Right now we're just tidying it back up. So far, everything has been so plug and play. I'm a little bit nervous. We're gonna fire it up in a few hours. And it's just, it's so unlike what I'm used to with the LS swaps where 
We had to do so much modifications, whereas we, we really haven't done that. And that's what's so great about this kit. That's why we chose them. It's almost like the vehicle was built around the drivetrain, but they did such an incredible job of laying everything out and planning everything that it's the opposite. They, they built this drivetrain to, to fit this vehicle and it just, it, it's amazing. It's, it's why when we're done with this, it will look OEM. I'm gonna jump back in and start tidying up all the little bitty details that are left. And then, uh, like I said, in a few hours, fire it up. All right, looks like everything is ready to go. And we're gonna go for our first start on the 6.4 Hemi in our Jeep Gladiator. Keep in mind, this is the very first time we started it. The only thing we've done is gone up to America's Most Wanted 4x4. We did some training up there for about a week. Came back, got the kit and installed it. We took our time on it. We didn't get in a rush and we were done in about four days. All the fluids have been checked multiple times. You know, we've gone over thing quite a few times actually. Blake, let's hit it. No key fob. Oh, <laughs> how about the key fob? So close. Yeah, we're so close. All right, let's go. Too easy. <laughs> Everything started up right perfect the first time. That makes me a little bit nervous because we did this so quick relative to the LS swaps that we're used to doing. Three or four days versus three or four weeks. That makes me a little bit nervous, but so far everything seems great on it. Really just plug and played very nicely. We're gonna go through and make sure all the fluids are topped out. We're letting it get up to operating temp right now. Then we're gonna shut it off, check all the fluids, fluid levels again. Just make sure there's no wires sitting on an exhaust or anything like that. Once that's done, we're gonna take it out for a little bit of stroll through some parking lots and stuff like that. Get the transmission to shift some gears. And then bring it back in. We'll check everything one more time. Then we're gonna check, do a little bit of highway drive on it, make sure all the cruise control works and parking sensors, all that good stuff that supposedly doesn't work on other kits. So far, there's no engine lights on, so that's great. But we wanna make sure that everything else functions 100% like America's Most Wanted says it will. Getting out of here on the highway, we're doing about 65 right now, heavy traffic. I'm watching the temp on there and it's like 201. It's 99 degrees ambient temperature and the humidity is pretty stinking high out here too. So for us to be able to drive, maintaining that 201 is pretty good. That's always been a big concern with Hemi's, keeping them cool. And that doesn't seem like that's gonna be an issue in any of the ones that I drove before this uh, for test drive, you know, up at America's Most Wanted and driving it here in the Texas heat. I haven't had a single light warning you know any kind of check engine light or anything come on and that is huge i started this on a monday morning we took our sweet time on this and wrapped it up on a thursday evening cruise control works ac works parking every everything works on this truck exactly the way it did from the factory if we can do these in that amount of time that means that's more of you that we can service so this is a fun conversion. It used to, it used to hurt to do a V8 conversion. You know, the guys really enjoyed working on it in the shop. I enjoy working on it. And uh, I can tell you one thing, I love driving this thing. It is insanely awesome. I hate to say this because I've done so many LS conversions and I have an LS conversion in my JK, but I feel like this is a thousand times better. Like right now, I mean, we're doing about 70, Let's get into it. Oh, can you hear that? Ugh. Anybody looking to do this, you will not be disappointed. There's no way that if you, if you were disappointed in this swap, like you need to get on the first trip to Mars. The amount of torque that this thing puts out, man, puts you in the seat. It just plants you there and it's just freaking amazing. <laughs> and just go boogie on down the road. Um, I'm gonna head back to the shop now. You guys won't be disappointed and I look forward to swapping your Wrangler or Gladiator 
with an America's Most Wanted 4x4 Hemi conversion.